Hurry, before it's too late. Go grab up some flowers. Hey, it's Care. Welcome to Monte at the Lake. So I don't know where I have been, but I recently learned a new way to eco-dye. New to me. It's an ancient way, probably. But it's new to me thanks to a video I saw at Marion's World. I will link that video below. For the first time in my eco-dyeing experience, I am absolutely thrilled with how things turned out. These are pink and purple flocks from my flower garden mixed with my chocolate mint and some wild geranium leaves. And they turned out just stunning, just beautiful. Look at the perfection of that eco image. Now I've tried eco dyeing before. You, you won't find any videos on here because well, I might have talked about my eco dyed paper before, but my eco dyeing trials have been awful. But this was fantastic, and I'm going to show you how to do it. It's called flower pounding, and there's a there's a full name for it. I'll flash it up here because I don't a I don't remember it, and I don't think I could pronounce it if I remember correctly. But you get two for one because this is a this is an old bed sheet that I have cut up piece of part. And you take it and you fold it in half and you put your flowers in there and pound away and I'll show you how I did mine but so then you get two you get a and B isn't that wonderful and I I wanted to try some other things too oh it's upside down these look like iris the way that they ended up they look like bearded iris, but they are tiger lilies or day lilies. And you can kind of see how it curls right here. That one left a perfect day lily curl, but they kind of flattened out when I hit them with the hammer. And there's still quite a bit of the flower left on. And I'll show you here. I let them dry on the sheet after I pounded them. And I, I got these beautiful but oh so delicate dried flocks. Kind of hard to see. There, that's better. They just peeled off once they were dry and I put them in my little coffee paint pan here and it's been humid. So I'm afraid that that one's stuck right on there. They are whisper thin. I'm just gonna call that one a loss and it's almost like peeling off sunburned skin it's so so thin but I got a couple that I can play with and there's still some on on the fabric you get two for one so and you can use either side isn't that beautiful I just think it turned out so pretty so pretty this is the my blueberry dyed. I did a short video on that, how I did the blueberry dyeing. And that just, I just think it came out so fun. Both sides are awesome. I did. Oh, here. Here you can see. So I left them on to dry. This is another sheet. But, but this one ripped. I thought if they stay on there fine, because they weren't coming off easy when I did it, they can stay on there. Um, but if they come off, that's fine too. But they, they're they breaking. The petals are all broke apart. There's another one that's pretty intact. There's another one that's fully intact. But this is another sheet that I did, another piece of that same uh, bed sheet I just once I started I couldn't stop and it was just so fun so this is one big piece that I folded no how did I do that oh I know I put pieces of paper underneath you'll see in the video look at the color in that it's like a watercolor it is so pretty and so delicate so this one I, I arranged a little bit differently, and I do believe I have video of all of this here for you. It's been a while uh, since I did this. Some of them are super, super light, barely there. 
You can see it a little bit better in person than you can on camera. These, I think, are the phlox leaves. And then I wanted to try clover. I have a lot of wild clover growing in the backyard. And it's such a vibrant green. And I wanted something in between here, but I didn't want more phlox, more of the same. I wanted something different. And so you see, this is the little yellow flowers from the wild clover. And they just, they just add such a delicate touch to the whole thing. And I have lots of plans for these. I also, I have a, a plant in my yard. I don't know what it, it is. <laughs> it's ginormous. It's very healthy plant. Uh, but I did that plant as well. The flowers and some petals. And these are the leaves from that flower. But they just came out so vibrant. So I'll show you how I did this. I'll show you my process the best I can with one-handed camera because I did it in the kitchen. And one of these videos, I don't think it'll be this video, but I will tell you what my plans are for these wonderful fabrics. Coming up, one of these videos soon. So stay tuned if you want to know the rest of the story. <laughs> Here's the process. I'm putting down copy paper, just plain Jane copy paper in case something cool comes through. I don't know if it will or not. I have taken old bed sheet and ripped it into different sizes. This is I'm going to use for the yellow. I have plucked some yellow flowers with their leaves and these are my, I don't know what these are, I have no idea. So if you know, put it in the comments below. I'd love to know. And these are flocks and the leaves from the flocks. Just going to, and I'm doing this in the kitchen because pounding will jiggle the table like nobody's business. However, the camera angle is gonna be wonky sometimes and it's, it's awkward to do this, all this one-handed. I have a tripod somewhere for the camera, phone camera, but I have not been able to locate it, so we're, we're going without. I try to pull all the strings out that are loose and hanging just because they're messy to work with and it that leaves the nice frayed edge on the sheet. So I've laid down my sheet. That's the bottom layer and I have left enough to fold over for a top layer and I'm just going to place my flowers. Actually, I'm going to place the leaves first. And it's just like designing any other thing you know you want a variation of size and balance and contrast and since it's nature you want a little bit of non-symmetricalness natural you know you don't want to place exactly an inch apart because that's not how nature works necessarily especially with flowers and these i've just popped them off with my fingers so i'm going to cut those ends off up into this green part a little bit so that they lay as flat as possible like that and then they'll lay a little bit nicer I want my bigger flowers with my bigger leaves I have to cut the rest of these off. Be careful with these daisy type because if you cut too much of the bottom off all you're left with is petals I'm just gonna see if I can still place it somehow naturally and see see what happens oh it just falls apart and that irritates me but i could put some of the petals just hither and yon nothing going to waste so i'm just going to put some of the petals around there now i've moved all the little icky bits that that will dirty up your image so if you get these little bits and pieces from the flower try to clean it off the sheet the best that you can just you know Pick them out of the way. Use the petals that from that broken flower as sort of a border, and I just placed my flowers. Now, very gently, take your top half and fold it over. 
And then you just start to hammer in. I'll just show you a little bit. I won't suffer you through the whole thing, but it's so cool. And I've never done the yellow ones. I know how well the flocks work really well. I've not done these, so we'll just have to see. And I'm gonna start on this end, I guess. And yeah, you have to make sure stuff on your counter is secure, because stuff's gonna go everywhere. An escapee already. No escaping the hammer. And you can see that it the image just comes to life. It's like it's like magic. I've never heard of this before, but apparently it's a thing. And I watched Marion and Marion's world do this to great result and had to try it immediately that's the image that i showed you there. the image of the leaf the leaves come out very detailed but you have to keep hitting it and my hammer is old and it's kind of got a rounded tip and maybe that's how they all are i don't know but i kind of have to tilt it a little bit for detail work i feel like i'm you know carving figurines with a chainsaw here but for detail work i tip it just a little bit to get a more specific pound oh and this irritates the neighbors i'll bet yay it's my turn Because if it's not turning out right away, maybe you're not hitting all the petals or just keep at it. It's not a one hit wonder kind of a thing. Isn't that just so cool? I'm going to hammer away and I'll bring you back in a little bit. Kind of midway through. Ooh, it smells so green. <laughs> what I notice too when I hammer, I kind of move it a little bit ever so slightly there's a little bit of a move to kind of pound and smear just ever so delicately All in one fluid motion these are funny they look like little tiny bananas aren't they cute and my sheet shifted a little bit during my pounding and I it was already stuck here because of the pounding, and so when you move it, it disrupts these others, so you just kind of got to go with it, I guess, or make sure it's good and properly folded. Maybe make a finger crease on this side so that it has less of a chance to shift, but everything's shifting, everything on my counter. Stuff's falling off the counter, and spoons are dropping, and keys and money, and all falling off the counter. Paperwork, you know, it's part of the deal. Okay, I think I'm done. There's a little bit of white space in between. You can keep hammering it, but I, I quite like that white space. White space is good in a watercolor, in any kind of painting, leaving a little bit of white space, even in coloring. A lot of people will color everything, like a coloring book, you color everything in. But leaving some highlights and some white spaces make it, makes it look more realistic. So keep that in mind, that the white space is your friend. Now they don't really look like my pretty little yellow flowers anymore. The petals look fine, either little bananas or little zucchinis, but surrounded here we know that those are petals. Now this is the back of one of the pages. So we're just gonna open up to the, sorry I couldn't show you the big reveal because that takes two hands. Um, but this is the primary page, I would say. There is some three-dimensional stuff here that you just have to kind of peel away and get rid of. Scrape it off. Scrape them off. And these petals get so paper thin. So we have that page. And then we have here, where this is where most of the plants still are. This is the part we were pounding, the back of the part we were pounding. And then you just lift that off and throw that out. 
This is not a fast project. Pounding takes a while. A good, I'd say 15 or 20 minutes of pounding for this. So don't think that because you're seeing it in a short video that it's a super quick thing because it's not. It doesn't take all day either. It's, it's a nice, fun little way to preserve your summer or whatever season you're picking your flowers in. Now these gunky brown parts are that center that we needed to re keep, otherwise it would fall apart. Now this one left quite a bit of the real leaf. And again, now you have medium and dark and light spaces, makes it look more realistic. I don't mind leaving that on. I think it's gonna dry fine. If you just let it dry, you don't want it to mold. So make sure to maybe set it out in the sun so it gets good and baked. And as it dries, some of these parts will lift off. And that's all right. If you can't keep it, can't keep it. But I'm gonna do another set of flocks. And I just wanted to show you a quick like the paper that was underneath the sheet whilst I was hammering. It made some really nice patterns and images, perfectly usable in a junk journal page or a nature journal, or a whatever you want to do. Turned out pretty cool. I wanted to point out these phlox petals, phlox flowers have stems too that all need to be cut off and I grabbed myself a truckload so I'm gonna go cut off all their stems. These can get pretty close without things falling apart but still you gotta leave a little bit intact otherwise you'll have a handful of petals again. So I cut that one down and then I take it in my finger and I just kind of smush it a little bit just to train it, to let it know it has to lay flat. I'm gonna do the rest of them and set it up and I'll be back. So here's my setup this time. I have the paper underneath and I was gonna put some of the flowers directly on the paper and just do one sheet instead of folding it. Instead what I did was take all those little stems that I cut off and I put those on the paper, then the sheet over it. And this time I, instead of folding it from this way, long ways like this I'm going to fold it up and down from the bottom and then get to hammering but this is how I've set it up and it's just random because usually that's how nature is especially flowers you know they grow where they grow you don't have to be too precise about this at all because as you saw in the yellow one stuff is going to shift but I'm going to get to hammering and then I'll show you how this one turned out turned out lovely. I just love it. These darker ones, the full petal is still on there. I'm doing a bit of an experiment. I pulled the ones that were super easy to get off and they just came off really fast and easy. I pulled that off, um, but some of these are pounded almost into the fabric. I'm going to let it dry and see if, if they'll stay because I like the darker and the lighter of it. Um, but it seems to me the last one I did, when they dried, they kind of curled up and came away from the fabric, and then I peeled them off, and that's how I got the petals, or excuse me, the dried pressed flowers to use in other things. So I'm just gonna let this dry. I've peeled off most of the stuff. The rest I'm gonna leave, let it dry naturally, and see what I see. I also went out and I got some clover and did some clover because I had some bare spots here and I thought, well, I don't want to do any more of these. Let's see how the clovers will work because clovers are so bright green, but look how yellowy they are compared to those dark green leaves. That surprises me. Look at the color play here. Isn't that wonderful? My yellow clover got on my purple something or other and this turned pink a little bit. Now there's a coral. Oh, that's so yummy. I did quite a bit of the clover, that's sideways obviously, but it turned out really nice too. It's kind of like peeling skin when you get a sunburn, either grosses you out or you, you can't get enough. <laughs> I quite like peeling, peeling stuff like that, so I'm going to enjoy this. I just kind of give it a little bit of love and peel it off, but some of them there's nothing to, to pick at. I hope you enjoyed that. 
I sure did. I had such a great time and I can't wait to do different things uh, now that I know how to do this. It's just so fun and it's a beautiful, easy, if I can make it work, eco dyeing, you can make it work. <laughs> and you don't need anything special. I've, I've seen some comments about needing tenderizer and special papers and a, and a soft rubber mallet and I it, an old bed sheet and a hammer. That's it. No tenderizer, no chemicals, no special additives, no special tools, just whatever you have. Try that. Don't make it any more complicated than it has to be. Stay tuned and I, in a future video, one of these days, I'll show you what I plan to do with these. In the meantime, please go love up your Beastlies. Take super, super good care of them. Give them an extra cookie from Bits and Me. Because you never know what tomorrow's going to bring. I'm going to take out the lake. Out for now.